Uh, hey guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome back to another uh, tier list. Uh, 21.0 just dropped, and I thought we would look at my old tier list to see uh, some of the changes um, how, and how I'm uh, restructuring uh, my tier list. I tend to do this every tier list. I tend to add a different random category or change a category. Um, but this is uh, this was my old tier list. Um, as you can see, like, Enchant Sword was top of S+, Demon Hunter was Insanity, um, Dryad, uh, Trapper was great, uh, and, and, like, just to, just to, like, really quickly touch on Trapper, Trapper is one of those, like, heroes that went from zero to hero, and even though this has fallen off, uh, spoiler alert, uh, even though this has fallen off for the next tier list, Trapper is way better than what it used to be, and it doesn't even have talents. Um, so just, just to, just to think about, um, S tier, uh, was basically like all of the, uh, ne next top tier decks. Um, if there's always going to be like a top, top tier deck, um, and for a, a while it was Demon Hunter and certainly in 20, uh, 21.0, 20.0, 21.0, whatever this was, uh, the, the patch before, um, Demon Hunter was the top, um, but Inquisitor was like really high up there. Bruiser was still pretty good. Spirit Master wasn't being played as much. Um, Tesla uh, not as much as either. And then like Monk was still pretty good, but it was probably at, like the bottom. Um, Summoner uh, at high levels was really good. Uh, Portal Keeper I will always have a soft spot for. Um, and then the next tier down was going to be like the the next tier of uh, decks that probably couldn't match these, and then definitely doesn't match S+. Um, and we have, like, Blade Dancer, uh, Cultist, Robot, Shaman Witch were always kind of um, in the same category, like, right next to each other, because they serve basically the same purpose. Um, Scrapper Knight Statue, um, in the same way. Um, I put Banshee and uh, Sea Dog at last, um, mostly because there wasn't, like, a lot of data on it. Um... And then the next tier down was basically, like, the best of, like, um, it, it was just, like, a lot of support cards. Boreas Grindstone was in there because it was being played so much. Sharpshooter, Banner, uh, Chemist, uh, Chemist if you didn't have Trapper, uh, and then, like, Corsair in some niche decks. Uh, C tier was, like, if it got, it, 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 there was a, there was an idea that it was, like, the best of, like, um, common e epics and rares, uh, and, and like, an alchemist, like a zealot, uh, the rogue deck, um, and, like, if you didn't have any legendaries, and you, these are cards that you could theoretically build around, um, and then the D tier was literally just the bottom, um, it was just everything that, uh, nobody plays, uh, they either don't have talents, or j it was just, um, for the most part, nobody played, and then extra cards, um, was a very specific, uh, what's the, uh, was, it was a very specific, um, what a deck! It, it was the uh, it was the the um, fr uh, it was some variation of like Minotaur, Meteor, all of that. Um, Frost. It was the the toxic deck, the one with the Necromancer. Uh, that was in extra, and I didn't really want to. Uh, I didn't want to say that it's an A card um, because it's all of those cards really only work in that one specific deck. Um, so, with all that being said. Um, and with the idea that this is a podcast, uh, you don't need to be looking at your screen. All of this is going to be basically auditory. Um, and so if you want to just like put me in a corner and, uh, and listen to this, uh, you can. Um, but this is, uh, my updated tier list. I feel pretty confident about this. Um, again, this is all, uh, my opinion. Uh, if you disagree with my opinion, that's going to be pretty obvious because, uh, you know, like you could have a card, you know, that's above or below a tier, a card or above or below a spot on the, within the same list. Like maybe you think Inquisitor is the best card and not Monk. Monk is less than Inquisitor. I don't know. Like, um, but, and, and, and that is, that is going to happen. Obviously, um, I, I feel like I am the sole YouTuber that is creating tier lists. So if you want to be the next content creator to create tier lists, uh, please create your own tier list and have everybody in the comments disagree with you as well. <laughs> because that is, that's basically, uh, how this is always going to work. Any tier list ever created in the history of ever will always have somebody being like, oh, that card is too high or that card is too low. Um, 
So I don't necessarily want to get angry at you in the comments. So just know that if you decide to be like, that that card is too high or that card is too low. All of this is opinion. Um, this is just my own opinion. This is how I view the game. Um, and yeah, uh, so here we go. Um, I'm going to start at... You know what? I started at the bottom before. I'm going to start at the top this time. Um, so I'll c quickly explain all my categories and then I'll go into uh, S+. Plus. Um, S plus is uh, what I think to be the best of the best cards um, in this set. Uh, in this patch, uh, the cards that got like the biggest bump, cards that are uh, in every deck, um, the best uh, like top tier meta cards that I see being played the most. Um, S tier is uh, it's still pretty good. Um, it's um, and I did do this in order from like left to right. Uh, what I think is the best, um, the best in that tier, and then you know like, the worst in that tier. Um, uh, S tier is basically going to be your um, your next tier down, your DPS cards that are the next tier down. Um, A tier is the next tier down from that, but still competable. Um, B um, is very uh, B is very specifically it's better than like common epics and rares, but not by much. Um, the I wanted to create a separate category that I put as uh, B.O.B. and it's best of the bottom. Um, so this is very near to F, which is the giant category, um, and this is the best of the bottom tier. So in terms of commons, epics, and rares, the cards that I would theoretically go for, but once you get legendaries, these all tend to fade away. Um, and then F tier is just like cards that I really don't want to talk about. You've heard me talk about all of these um, in detail in other videos. Um, if you uh, have been playing the game for any period of time, basically whenever you get any of these F cards, um, if you have any card above that t uh, above this tier, you basically replace these cards with those cards, um, and essentially it'll make your deck better. Um, and, and then extra is going to be that one specific deck, which is, again, uh, the Necromancer deck. Um, I didn't know where to place it. Mime especially. I wasn't really sure where to place Mime. Um, and so I put it into this uh, specific extra category um, because I think that they're all good cards in the specific deck. But I think outside of that deck, none of these cards really see uh, play. Um, so here we go. Um, we're going to start up at S+. Plus. Um, I think that the best card right now, by far, is Monk. Um, I I think that Monk is is putting up crazy numbers, and I I think that even if it gets beat out um, at, in top tier levels um, by a Demon Hunter, by an Inquisitor, by a Spirit Master, I think that even if it gets beat out in top tier um, decks, in top tier um, like you know like League Sixteens and whatnot, I think that the fact that you can run a level 11 monk um, with a mermaid and still be able to get into that, you know, 69, you know, like realm, uh, the 69 trophies that I uh, aspire to every single um, rotation. I think the fact that you can reasonably run a level 11 monk um, to some amount of success and it doesn't need to be maxed out. It doesn't need to be the best of the best deck. You don't need Zeus. You don't need... Um, because you're running Mermaid, you don't need a max Mermaid. Like, the fact that you can run, like, a level 5 Mermaid and, like, a, a level 11 Monk and still put up crazy numbers against maxed out decks, I think that that's insane. And the fact that it gets better from there, like, if you have the Max Monk, if you have the Max Dryad, if you have the Max uh, Summoner, if you have, like, a really high-end Chance Sword, it, the fact that you, and the fact that Harley Quinn is going to get talents at some point, um, I think that um, Monk right now, and they're probably going to hard nerf it next month, and all they really, all, or not next month, but next uh, next patch, uh, whenever they update patch notes and whatnot. Um, I don't think it's broken to the point where they need to, like, super nerf it now, but I think even, like, slight nerfing it with, like, going from 20 seconds to 30 seconds would nerf it pretty hard. Um, the Going from 30 to 20 was insanity, and that's what I was so excited about it. Um, I still think that uh, 
having the upgrade talent, the illumination talent, because you should be running the illumination talent if you're running mermaid. Um, I think that equilibrium is just off the chain. Um, I think that if they changed it back, it would be less good. If they change the uh, 30 to 20, that would be less good. Um, or if they go back from 20 to 30, that would make it... Um, if they did either of those changes, if they either uh, made equilibrium back to where what it used to be, which is only when it got leveled up, that's when you would get the thing, not on intersection monks. Um, I think that would nerf it pretty hard, and I think that making it go from twenty to back to thirty would also nerf it pretty hard, um, because the, uh, once you start getting into ladder rounds where rounds are like forty seconds, you can still activate it during a uh, the wave round and still have it during the boss round. Um, if they changed it to thirty and you had to pick and choose when to activate it, either to because it doesn't do well with waves uh, as it starts to get uh, into the ladder rounds, um, it does because of the AOE. But you only get the AOE when you activate it. If you activate it, then you don't have the activation for the boss, um, and so you have to pick. Either you're going to have a giant boss, or um, you're going to almost die to a wave. Um, and that's basically the where Mung starts to fall off. Um, and if they changed it back to 30 and you had to pick, I think that would severely hamper it too. Um, but if they made either of those nerfs, I think that you would see it drop. But because they haven't and Monk is basically at its strongest right now, it's insanity. Um, and I don't think you should sleep on it. Um, I think I do think that they will nerf it, but I think if you have a level 11 monk with a level 5 plus a level 11 plus monk and a level 5 plus mermaid, I think you're you're gonna have a lot of fun this season. Um, currently, right now, um, I did want to put Inquisitor into the top meta. Um, I am going to level up my Inquisitor to 14 um, pretty soon, uh, probably next month. Uh, or this this month as it starts like the, the I, I always think of months as when the uh, season starts when the season pass starts um, And so in the next season pass, I'm probably gonna level up my uh, Inquisitor to 14. Uh, I currently have it at 12 um, It's going to be um, I have the copies. I just need the nine crystals. I have two crystals uh, and then with the uh, season pass, you'll get three crystals, uh, which will put me at five. And then if I sacrifice four more things, um, I can take it to f uh, 13. And then if I use the book on it, I can take it to 14. Um, and and then over the course of time, you know, take it to 15. Um, I think that Inquisitor, uh, the fact that it has been able to survive numerous uh, nerfs and just continue to put up strong numbers, I think it deserves to be an S+. Plus just for its consistency. Um, I think the fact that you have the ability to either use a Dark Inquisitor with Clock or a Light Inquisitor um, with... Uh, people are using J now, um, but the fact that it cleanses... Uh, the Light Inquisitor side cleanses just so well, um, and the fact that Night Statue got talents, um, it just made the, the deck even better. Um, I think that the consistency that Inquisitor has been showing every single season, again and again and again, just being at the top, um, if even if not in the top top meta, um, but basically an S tier, it's always an S tier, sometimes it's an S plus, and that's through multiple nerfs. I think that Inquisitor is probably going to be one of the best cards to invest in, um, simply for the fact that even through all of these nerfs, it still puts up high damage numbers all the time. Um, or you can, yeah, and or like I said, you can go the Dark Inquisitor clock route, um, and then just, and win like that. And then if that doesn't work out, you can go the the light inquisitor um damage route with a with night statue and both work pretty well um i think spirit master is also an s plus card um it's not as obvious as the other two um because not a lot of people have like a max spirit master but i think that uh spirit master got a lot of buff with the witch um and if you have already noticed um i did take shaman out of um s tier um, I think that it's still good, but I think that Witch is proving to be really, really good with the Gift of the Raven buff. Um, a max level, you're not going to notice it with a low level Witch. I have like a level 9 and I, I didn't notice, you know, any amount of buff um, or it being any better than it used to be. But a max level Witch um, with Gift of the Raven and Unstable Magic um, 
ironically, I I would think that Polymorph is better uh, because your witches will become other things in your deck. Um, but I think that people run Unstable Magic, which is the uh, level three or above witches uh, have the ability to attack multiple targets and insta kill them. It basically just becomes a Reaper at high levels. Um, once you start going into the one million. 1 million plus uh, monsters uh, on the field, uh, being able to insta-kill monsters uh, just helps any deck. Uh, one of the things that Spirit Master is uh, notoriously known for is not being able to handle waves, and uh, Unstable Magic really helps out with that. Um, and then the Gift of the Raven buff with a Knight Statue um, on Spirit Master uh, is basically solves all of its problems. Um, I, I don't think that Spirit Master is that great without a high level witch. Um, you can use Trapper to slow down the field. Uh, the the deck also runs uh, Mari, which is also there to help you deal with wa uh, with the the waves uh, because it nukes down bosses. Um, I've played a Spirit Master. Um, I don't have a max. I, I have uh, like a thirteen Spirit Master. Um, and I've, uh, I've had like 100 million, uh, bosses. And as soon as the boss comes in and I activate the, the stone boulder at above level five, uh, it just nukes down the boss. It just like automatically destroys it. It's, it's crazy. The damage numbers that it has against bosses, um, is absolutely insane on a crit. And, um, and I think that witch makes it even high, makes that damage number even is like skyrockets. Um, and then when you add in a knight statue, um, so that you get the crit chance and the attack speed, um, it it's it it pr it does pretty well. And what's funny is it doesn't even have increased damage uh, like some of the other units do, like how a uh, monk with equilibrium does, uh, light uh, light inquisitor um, sucking it or uh, what's it called, light inquisitor getting a, a stack every single time you kill a boss. Uh, demon hunter with those stacks it doesn't even have like it doesn't even have increased damage like that its own inherent increased damage but the fact that it cleanses uh it's one of the one of one of the early units to to cleanse to auto cleanse itself uh through a talent um that gives it a lot of edge and that is the meta that that is what you will notice in the meta it's just that if you it, it's either your uh, your unit can cleanse itself very efficiently, um, or that deck is running Mermaid, and Mermaid is an efficient enough cleanse. Um, which uh, is... It's 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 why I said invest in, into Mermaid. Um, but I think that the two support cards, and it could be argued that Harlequin Dryad should be at the top of S+. Um, I, I don't necessarily... I don't know. It's all, it's all there. It's, you know... Um, you can say that it's the best because they're in every deck, and maybe if I if I redid this tier list, that's the only thing that I would change. Um, but that's not to say that it's not an S plus, or that's not to say that it's not an S plus card, um, or that it's one of just the best cards. Um, Harley Quinn and Dryad are basically in every single deck. Uh, once you get both of them, you should be running it in every deck to make your deck better. Um, it's actually much easier uh, to think to run Harley Quinn and Dryad. Um, it's they're, they're just two cards that give your deck so much consistency. And if you have the ability to cleanse, which you should, uh, Harley Quinn gives you no uh, no downside. Uh, you can Harley Quinn all of your units um, into spots that you want it to be. Uh, you can put them onto tiles. Um, and then cleanse, cleanse your field with whatever you're using to cleanse. Um, you can it, Harley Quinn when you merge things and they and you merge up really high. Instead of getting an awkward level five unit, uh, sometimes you get a level five Harley Quinn, which can then become anything that you want it to be. And I think that versatility, and then and then you should be able to cleanse whatever that thing is. Um, and I think that that versatility is what makes it so good. Uh, there was a part of me a long time ago that wanted to say that Summoner is essentially a better Harley Quinn, and I was wrong. Um, Harley Quinn is in a category of its own. Um, being able to duplicate anything on the field that you don't, uh, that you need more of, 
um, is just the biggest benefit. Um, running Dark Inquisitor and being able to, uh, in the early game, Harley Quinn a Dark Inquisitor on, or make an Inquisitor on a tile that you want, and then killing off the other tile, um, or the other Inquisitor, so that you get a t uh, an Inquisitor on a tile and you don't need to run a Portal Keeper, is insane. Harley Quinning late game uh, Inquisitors, so that you get more. Um, Harley Quinning Dryads, so that you can build up your uh, Dark Inquisitor. It just works at every stage of the game. Um, I think that Dryad is uh, another support card that you will basically run in every deck. I think that if you're running Scrapper, there are only two ways of leveling up cards. Um, there, okay, there are three ways of leveling up cards in this game. One of them is randomly merging, which is what this game is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a, you know, a merging game. It's supposed to work on the idea of randomness. Um, but that is the most inefficient way to level up your cards because they can become anything in your deck, including the useless cards in your deck. Dryad and Scrapper are the two uh, targetable ways to upgrade your cards in this game. Scrapper is too slow and doesn't have talents, um, which is why the only thing that the only time people ever use Scrapper is if they are also using Knight Statue in order to get rid of Knight Statues, um, so that you always have uh, two. Uh, Dryad, on the other hand, has talents, and if and the higher the talents uh, you have, the better Dryad becomes. If you have a level nine Dryad, you should be running uh, Fairy of Growth. If you have an eleven, a level eleven Dryad, you should start running Rage Fairy. Um, and you basically never look back on Fairy of Growth. You never use Fairy of Growth again because uh, Fairy of Rage is so good. The idea that a Dryad, which should just be a support unit, also adds to the da overall damage of your deck. Um, over the course of the game is crazy. Um, being able to theoretically stack 20 uh, Dryad stacks and getting plus 50% damage for your deck is exactly why people use it. Other than the fact that you also need Dryad early game, which again is why people don't use Scrapper, um, because you even if you were to run a Knight Statue um, Inquisitor deck, even if you got everything in the right spot, and, and then you just started scrappering, you could hit your knight statue. You could potentially uh, sacrifice 28 summons uh, because it's every every four. Um, and then the next one is um, a scrapper hit. So every, I guess every five. Um, you could sacrifice 35 uh, summons and your, and, or no, maybe less than that. It's five. You can sacrifice thirty summons, um, have a, a a knight statue and an inquisitor on the field, and your knight statue could get uh, hit six times, and your light inquisitor get hit nothing, um, because scrapper is random. And the fact that scrapper is random, and because that has the potential to happen, even if you only have the two units on the field. You could summon in 30 summonins and only hit your knights at you just over and over and over. The fact that that has the ability to happen is the reason why most people would rather use Dryad. And if you are using um, Scrapper, um, if you're running Scrapper and Knight Statue, you still kind of want to use a Dryad so that that doesn't happen. Um, and so that you can target uh, your your Inquisitor to level that up um, to, to, to level that up. Dryad is just so much better. And then that, that's not even to say like if you had a max Dryad and you got the gold fairies to double level up something. Uh, that's when it gets really insane. But I think that Harley Quinn Dryad are the best support cards in this game. Um, I think that if you have both, um, you're, you have to run it in your deck. I, I, don't, I, I don't see a reality where a deck doesn't want to run both of those cards. Um... I think that Tesla, even though I don't run it, I think that it's a very strong card. I have been beaten by it a large quantity of times. Um, I think that Tesla in either version, uh, either running Tesla Night Statue or Tesla Clock, um, I think Tesla Clock is much scarier um, because Tesla by itself, it just the the damage number, the damage output that it, it makes is it makes it like an infinitely better cultist. I think everything that cultist tries to do, uh, Tesla does better. Um, it tries to be um, a a card that 
uh, is is uh, is really good at AOE damage. Um, if you get a level six Tesla on a knight statue, like the damage output that you're putting is crazy um, because it's not spreading either. It's all focusing onto the one target. Um, as well as if you have multiple targets, it's it's focusing the same amount of damage on all of the targets. It's it's the amount of damage that a Tesla outputs is insane. Um, you kind of need like a max Tesla. Uh, you kind of need like a really high level Tesla. And for the most part, I do believe you need to run Mermaid. Um, but it, it's the 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 output is is crazy. Uh, I think that Demon Hunter is still good. Um, I don't think that it is as... It's obviously not as good as it used to be, um, especially because m most people would run Twilight Hunting with it, and they severely nerfed Twilight Hunting. It's still fine, uh, but it's not putting outputting the same damage numbers that it used to. Um, I think Absorption is the thing that people are starting to gravitate a little bit more towards. Um, you'll probably find more people running Absorption decks um, soon, once they realize that the nerf is pretty hard. Um, I think that Sea Dog is starting to show a little bit more. Um, I think because it's such an early event unit, not a lot of people have it, so you probably won't see it. But if you do go into higher like tiers, uh, into your like league, league sixteen, league fifteen, league fourteen, like those higher tiers, um, I think that Sea Dog is starting to show uh, some amount of uh, damage output. Um, originally, I thought that it was just going to be good in in the Toxic deck, but I have seen uh, like Sea Dogs that are just that they're just using Sea Dog as the actual DPS, and it's actually pretty good. Um, again, I don't think it's something that you'll notice. Um, I don't think it's something that you'll see a lot of uh, because it's just a lot of people that have spent a lot of money on the game um, because it is, again because it is so new, um, but it's. It's something to look out for. I think that it's um, at higher tier levels. I think it's something to look out for. I think Bruiser still um, does some pretty amazing output damage. Uh, it's the fact that um, POW is so good. Uh, I think POW is the thing that makes uh, Bruiser so good. And I think that um, even with the nerf to Awakening Rage, I think people are now running Furious Brotherhood as a, as a better option. Um, but it... it I think it's just the fact that it, it anything ca that can just delete bosses like a spirit master, um, even if they don't do that well against waves, if you can delete a boss just really easily and with like it, with a bruiser because it only runs like four or five bruisers on the field at any one given time, that means that it can actually uh, sacrifice level one bruisers that you obtain um, as the pow or you can use it as the. Um, the finisher move, uh, where you sacrifice the two, uh, and then you can, uh, just delete, uh, actually delete, like, just problematic bosses that you don't feel like you're gonna immediately take out. That could be the difference between, uh, getting bedlamed and not getting bedlamed, um, and your opponent getting bedlamed, because both of you were about to lose, but then they get bedlamed instead of you because you had the talent. Um, I think... I think that a high level bruiser is very good, but I think that the ceiling um, or the the gap in between a low a low level like you with a level nine bruiser and a level fifteen bruiser it, the the gap is very is very different. Um, it goes from basically an okay hero to like one of the best. But it's not to say look at your level nine and and you know like think that it's the best. It's probably not. But at high max level, it's one of the better units. Um, it's the talents, really. It's the level, it's the, the POW talent and the uppercut uh, talent. Uh, that's the 15 talent. Um, I think Banshee got a really big push um, in this this last update in the same way that Monk did. Maybe not as much because I don't think a lot of people have a Max Banshee, but I have seen Max Banshee. And the fact that, again, um, anything that deletes bosses, like b bosses are the reason why you die in this game. Um, at high level, bosses are problematic bosses are the reason why you die in this game. And if you cannot kill a boss um, at, you know, 100 million, 200 million, um, levels and you struggle with a boss and the boss has the ability to affect its use its effect even once um getting grandmastered late game combining out two of your strongest cards and making it a useless card is is detrimental getting bedlamed is detrimental um 
Sometimes even like getting leveled down um, all half of your units with a tribunal is detrimental. Getting warlocked and losing your best unit is detrimental. Um, the fact that Banshee's max talent is that it can see those detrimental um, bosses and say, nope, you're actually not going to use that ability. The fact that it can, it does as much AOE as it does, and the fact that it's a hard counter to every single clock deck, uh, Tesla clock, robot clock, uh, Dark Inquisitor clock, um, the fact that it's a hard counter to clock because it doesn't use attack speed, um, I think it puts it pretty high in the meta. I think it's a, it's definitely like a meta killer. Um, I don't think that there's a lot of it out there but I think that the the amount that is out there um, is pretty good. Uh, summoner, um, I think that Summoner, I, I still have the same uh, thoughts uh, as to when Summoner came out. Um, I think that Summoner at level 9 is really good. And then I think Summoner at level 13, 15 is really good. Um, the, uh, the level 11 talent is something, but it's not enough of something to be... Uh, uh, effective, um, but I, th I do think that at high level 13, 15, it's really, really good. Um, but even if you have a level 9 summoner, I think that that is also pretty good. But I do think that Harley Quinn is just completely outshadows um, summoner. I wanted them to both be equivalent, like maybe that you could, because Harley Quinn doesn't have talents, uh, that you could just immediately uh, input all of your Harley Quinns with a summoner. I still think it's good. Um, but I don't think that the value of being able to straight up um, control what you want that unit to become um, is it can be understated. Like if you have, I was running a summoner in my uh, Blooming Dashboard Dancer setup um, as opposed to Harley Quinn, and like you would get into like a level three, you know, because I would have like a level three field, and I would have like one level three. Um, or I would have two level three uh, portal keepers and then four or five level three uh, blade dancers and then a level three summoner. Now, if it worked exactly how I thought, you know, like summoner is a direct replacement for um, Harlequin. Um, when you summonered, you, you, when you change the, you use enhanced summoning on the level three, right? For free uh, to just change it into anything. What you would hope for right there is a level 3 Blade Dancer, but theoretically you could get a level 3 Portal Keeper, at which point you have 3 Portal Keepers. Or you could get a level 3 Dryad, at which point you're not ready to start upgrading everything to level 3, so that's also useless. Um, but yeah, like, um, so it's good in the sense that it will always be something theoretically useful, but sometimes you could get um, you could get screwed by it giving you something that you already currently have enough of. And that's why Harley Quinn is better. Um, I think Clock uh, is not... Uh, it's Even though it's the most innocuous unit, uh, it, seemingly to put it S tier, I think that Clock, in, in every way that it's being used, um, in the aforementioned uh, Dark Inquisitor Clock, Robot Clock, Tesla Clock. Um, if you have a max clock and you're running those decks that specifically use it, it's very good. It's very good because it basically kills any deck. Um, it Because if you can't get rid of the clocks, if you have no way of affecting... Uh, of effectively destroying clocks with Shamans or with uh, Pocket Curse, um, and they have the ability to just stack clock upon clock upon clock uh your attack speed will just skyrocket it'll just like it'll just go down so quickly um uh i will always remember when i had like level four um blade dancers i had like a field of level four blade dancers and i was playing against dark inquisitor and my level four blade dancers were attacking like level two non-activated blade dancers it was terrible um and then i just died and it's that's how the deck wins it doesn't win because it deals more damage. It wins because you can't deal enough damage. Um, and I think that it's just such an effective unit against so many at decks because most decks would be affected um, by attack speed. And if you reduce their attack speed enough while also being able to inc um, increase pressure by uh, with damage, um, it's just such a it's just such a big benefit that works against so many different decks. Um, obviously, again, again, um, except for Banshee, but um, not a lot, not enough people have a max level Banshee uh, to take advantage of that.
Um, I put Witch at the bottom of S. Um, it's still very good, and I think that it's very good in the in the uh, Spirit Master deck. Um, I don't think that people are really using it for. Um, all right, now that that's that's wrong. Um, people are still kind of using it in the Toxic deck, um, in the Frost uh, Necromancer deck, um, and so I think that it's still useful in that regard. Um, but I think the fact that you can leave them a tile. Um, increase your own damage like exponentially um i think that all of these things that it that it has the ability to do um gives it uh, somewhat of an edge um in that that it should probably be an s card um i think it has just so many different kinds of utilities uh that make it really good as an end game card even if it's no longer like an early game card um it used to be where all you needed was a level 7 witch and you could probably win the game. Um, now, you kind of need like a talented witch. You kind of need like the level 11 talent. Um, you kind of need it to be higher so that your bonuses are better. Um, in either case, if you're using Gift of the Raven or if you're using Cruel Joke, um, when you get higher witches, your bonuses will be better. Um, so you still want, even even though the level 13 and 15 talent are not as amazing, um, I think that uh, having a higher level witch, you'll start to realize why it's amazing. Um, a tier is pretty much like the cards that are on the cusp of being good, but they're not. Um, I think Robot is at the top of that. Um, I think that Robot Clock is the best version of Robot. Um, I think that the 80 merges is actually much easier than i would have thought initially um and if and if you do have uh, you know like a max robot um i think that it can be good in the clock version it's not good against every deck but i think that it could theoretically be good um cultist will always you know it, cultist always puts up the damage numbers that a cultist should it's just that those damage numbers are not as good as they at, um at, as the um, S tier, um, and then the S plus tier. Blade Dancer, as much as it pains me to say, is probably at the bottom of this tier. Um, be, it, it's the it's the worst of the good damage cards um, because it has never been in the meta. Like you've never seen Blade Dancer in like a League sixteen. Um, if you do, it's because one person is running it, and that one person will eventually be me. Uh, trying to make Blooming Dash Blade Dancer a thing. Um, Blooming Dash is the better version of the deck. Um, I don't think Floral Frenzy is good. Um, I I think that you you're you're you have to fix so many problems with the Floral Frenzy version. Um, mainly, it doesn't have a good good enough cleanse. Um, at which point you uh, you can either uh, run Elegant Parry anyway and run Mermaid, um, or you can run. Uh, fencing with giants um, instead, and still have to you'd still have to run mermaid. Having to run mermaid means that you can't run gadget. Means you can't run Zeus. Means you can't run necromancer because you have to be able to efficiently cleanse. And that's not even to say that uh, a level five mermaid is an efficient way to cleanse because then if you go into any kind of trouble, problematic like um, sharpshooters, um, if you go up against like late game. Uh, a late game virus um if you're going even against uh it struggles even against like cultist uh harbinger shaman like the the amount of um the amount of hits that you can take from like a robot shaman deck um is crazy like they're just constantly clearing all of your bubbles and if they're constantly clearing all your bubbles and killing your units and the you know like virus and dark priests are happening as well um sometimes it's just not quick enough and I don't think that the Floral Frenzy version is good. Um, it's the only deck that people at high levels run, um, but I think that's only because they don't understand how to use Blooming Dash, maybe? I don't know. But I think Blooming Dash is infinitely better than the Floral Frenzy version, even with the um, even with Night Statue being out. Um, Trapper, uh, Trapper, Night Statue, and Sword are basically in the same row, and they're basically kind of the same. Um, I think that Trapper is still good. I think if you have a high enough Trapper, um, it's about as good as uh, a max level Chemist, um, even though they both don't have talents. Um, 
a max level chemist uh, at max at level seven will uh, debuff a hundred percent. I want to say it's like 90, 95, something around there. Um, a level, mm, I, I think I have a level 10 um, will debuff 50%, and if you have up to a maximum of about 100%. So if uh, I have two uh, nets on the field, and the creature is on top of both nets, um, I effectively am doing as much as a uh, chemist at max level, at level 7. But I only need uh, half the amount of trappers. Um, I think you could run like two or three level threes, um, and that's much easier in most cases than trying to get a level seven um, chemist on the field. Um, if you're running scrapper, I suppose uh, theoretically you could get a level seven chemist, um, but at that point, even then, I think I would still rather run trapper, but again, that's because I have a level 10 trapper. If you have a lower level, maybe chemist is the better option, um, but I do think that trapper is still better. Uh, sword, um, it's still good. I think that it's good at level 13 now, as opposed to being good at level 9 and getting better at 13. I think at 13, it's okay um, with, the, uh, with the ability where it gives... Um, where it activates a blue sword and a red sword. Um, I think that it's, I think that ability is really good. Um, if you have, if you can manage to have a blue awakened sword on your field, um, I don't think that red swords are great. Um, I think that the change to red swords, uh, made, makes enchant sword a little bit better, uh, wanting to get blue stacks. Um, because you're not getting blue stacks as often as you used to, the fact that they made it to where red stacks don't de uh, decrease your your number of stacks um, made that made r wanting to run sword much better. But it's just the fact that you don't get a lot of stacks um, as much as you did when when awakening sword was a thing. Um, if you get to level thirteen, I think it's okay. And if you have it at max, I think it's very good. Um, but I feel like most people don't have enchant sword at max. Um, and so it's still a good card. I just, it's obviously just not as good as it used to be. And it's only good if you have it at level 13 now. Whereas before, it, uh, the magical number was 9 and 13. Uh, now the magical number is 13 or nothing. If you don't have it at 13, don't run Enchant Sword. Um, and even if you get it to 13, what I'm trying to say is it's just kind of okay. And it's much better at 15, but at like 15, it's how I felt about Enchant Sword at level 9 pre-patch. Um, Knight Statue, I think, has a place in a lot of decks. Um, I think it's obviously the best in the Inquisitor deck, um, but I think it will give your deck some amount of something. I think that there's not a lot of uh, equipment card support cards right now. Um, I think Trapper is at the top of this because it's the easiest to use, um, but I think that a level nine, uh, a level nine knight statue, um, it's it's okay. Um, I think that Sharpen Spear uh, gives it a lot of uh, flexibility in how you use it. Um, I, I recently just did a knight statue uh, character spotlight, so if you don't understand how knight statue works, uh, go watch that. Um, and like Knight Statue Scrapper are basically, you know, they're they're just a pair. Like if you're running if you're running one, you're probably running the other, and that's why I decided to put them here. Um, I think that Shaman is still Shaman. It still does what Shaman does. Um, it's fine. It's not great. Um, Portal Keeper uh, from my first tier list that I ever created, I had Portal Keeper at an S plus card at the top of the tier. Um, it's it's very it's fallen very far down. Um, basically, if you are not running Blooming Dash, you shouldn't be running uh, Portal Keeper. I think that Portal Keeper still serves some sort of purpose um, in the sense that most if you don't have a level five mermaid, um, and if you're 
uh, if you don't have the talents on some of the legendary cards, uh, like a Light Inquisitor, like a um, Spirit Master, if you don't have the cleanse talents of some of these other cards, um, you might have to run Portal Keeper as your cleanse card. And I think in that, in the in the idea that it can still cleanse cards, um, I think that that gives it some inherent value. Um, and I think that it's still good. Um, I just don't think that you should be running it. Um, if you if once you get a level five mermaid, you should never run Portal Keeper again. Um, uh, and if you um, because uh, yeah, level five mermaid is is going to fix all of your problems basically. Um, level five mermaid and Harley Quinn are basically going to fix all of your your problems that you used to use Portal Keeper for. Um, but until you get a level five mermaid, I think that Portal Keeper is going to be very useful. Um, but up until that point. Um, or after that point, I don't think it's that good um, after that. Uh, again, unless you're running Blue Me Dash Blade Dancer. Um, in the B tier, uh, it's going to be the like the last of the legendaries and the last of the good cards. Um, Grindstone, Boreas Grindstone outputs like some pretty high damage numbers. And in terms of cards that you get very early on, if you can get Boreas Grindstone, it's going to carry you really far. Um, I don't think Corsair is necessarily in any kind of meta in the same way that I know that Boreas Grindstone does drop off. Um, Corsair definitely drops off. When they make Corsair Talents, it's going to be really good probably. Um, and it's, it might dr jump back into the meta. It might be an A card. Um, but the fact that we have Boreas Grindstone as you know, like we already have the max talents of Boreas Grindstone. They're probably not going to touch it. Um, Boreas Grindstone will probably stay here in B. Um, and then when other um, common epics and rares, uh, those might filter into B um, in maybe later uh, ladder tier lists that I make. Um, in terms of the uh, the whole reason why I wanted to create a uh, best of the bottom, um, it's just all of these commons, epics, and rares that I could see um, having some amount of play. Maybe not in the meta, um, but they're all like reasonably okay cards. I think Sharpshooter uh, should have probably been at the top of this list. Um, because Sharpshooter is seeing play, especially with Mermaid. Um, I don't want to put it any higher than this, though. Um, it might there's there's a case that you could have put it in B um, or maybe an A, um, but it's 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 also just such a niche card. Um, but with everybody running Mermaid, I think that it's much better now than what it used to be. Um, I still don't think that it's the greatest. Um, I think that it's really good in some specific decks, um, but I don't think that it's a card... Because uh, back in my tier list from, from the yesteryear, um, I had Sharpshooter as high as... I, I want to say A, because it was being run in every deck, and it was very good. But that's also when people didn't realize how good it was, and so people didn't have the... Um, it was it was always like a shocking thing. It was just like, oh, what what just happened? How did I get bedlamed? Um, now that people are very aware of it, I think people um, have the ability to to play around it. Um, you can activate your uh, your mermaid after the first boss, um, after you get uh, sharpshooter that initial time, uh, so that when you get sharpshooter for your second boss um, or in between, uh, you can cleanse. Uh, like that. You can cleanse five units automatically like that. Um, I, so I don't, I don't think it's as good as it used to be, but it's still okay. Um, in terms of the DPS cards that are the commons, epics, and rares, I think Alchemist is probably one of the best, um, if not the best, of, the, of this tier. Um, the Golem has the ability to just end games, uh, but, it, but in, in the same vein of all of these cards, if you have legendaries, your legendaries are better. And I'm talking about all of these cards at max tier um, with all talents. And you have max uh, a max level alchemist, a max level rogue, a max crystal mancer, max engineer um, with all the talents. I'm still going to say that if you have any other legendary, your legendaries are probably going to be better unless you have really bad legendaries. If you have like a level seven inquisitor, for example, uh, your level, your max level, max talent alchemist could probably beat that. Um, but if you have your... Um, Inquisitor or your your Blade Dancer at reasonably high levels, um, you're just going to want to use those. 
Um, I think Alchemist Golem is probably at the top of this um, because it's still able to compete way longer than it should. Um, I think that uh, Rogue Shinobi is... It, it's it's one of those cards that I feel like should be better than it is, but you just don't get ro uh, Shinobis enough. Um, I think Crystal Mancer, um, not the High Arcanist, but the other one, uh, the left side uh, Crystal Mancer, I think it's much better than the High Arcanist. I don't like cards that only attack in intervals, and you can't change that interval with uh, a Knight Statue with a banner. It um, The High Arcanist only attacks every three seconds, um, and even though it's a very strong attack, um, it's kind of like Monk. In the sense that you're either dying to waves because uh, you're not attacking fast enough, or you're dying to a boss because they activated their ability because you didn't attack fast enough. Um, I I don't think that the the higher Canis is is good. I think the left side talent is fine, um, but you also don't have increased damage over the course of time. Um, on any of the ab abilities. The fact that you have a level up is really good, um, but Hunter has a level up, and it's not its not a meta card. Um, just because you can upgrade your your cards uh, passively, and that's only a sometimes, by the way. I want to say it's like a 30% chance. Um, but just because you can upgrade your cards doesn't mean that it's better. Um, if it doesn't, because if it doesn't grow in its attack... Um, you're just going to eventually get outclassed and you won't be able to deal damage fast enough with a Crystal Mancer. Um, it's the same thing for Engineer. Engineer has the same basic problem. Like, it's really good early on. And so if you are really early on in the game and you invest in these cards, I think these are the best of the bottom. Um, but I think that they eventually get outclassed because they don't increase their damage in any way over the course of the game. Um, Earth Elemental is seeing play in Banshee decks, so I thought I'd inc include it here. Uh, Chemist is seeing play, um, and I I, I want to say that people will eventually understand that Trapper is still better. Um, if you have a level 10 or higher Trapper, uh, it is better than your Chemist. I don't know about level 9s, um, what the percent numbers are for 9, but I just know that I have a level 10 Trapper and I'd rather use it over Chemist, especially because it has slow. Um, if you're running a Scrapper deck um, where you can relatively easily use Scrappers to upgrade your, your Chemist and you don't want you don't necessarily want to run like a bunch of things on your field um in the way that trapper makes you uh trapper makes you want to run like a large quantity of trappers on the field so that you get the traps more consistently uh the benefit to chemist is that it can just be the one thing on your field uh that gives you all the benefit um it's fine i don't know um i think banner is see some play in some niche kind of deck um i think that there was an idea to run it with, um, to run it with, uh, Dark Inquisitor, but I think there are better options. I think that Night Statue is a better option. I think Witch is a better option. Um, which is why I have it so low. Um, Bombardier sees some amount of play in some decks. Um, I thought that that was very strange. People were actually using it for the stun. Um, Reaper, I think, is. It's the bottom of the best of the bottom. Like, it's just not as good as it used to be. Um, it doesn't feel like it activates as often as you would want it to activate. Um, especially cause you don't want to run a, you don't, even if you're running it, you don't want to run a lot of them on your field. Um, and the fact that you only get the spirit, uh, summoned to their field, if you merge out, um, a reaper and not, uh, on chance when you're, you're swiping, um, I think that that is also a detriment because I think that if it was on swipe, if you like killed like a bunch of things, um, and then had the chance to, uh, summon a thing on their field, I think it would be much better. But because you only get that when it merges out, I don't think it's as good. Um, and then everything else is basically just cards that I don't want to want to talk about. Um, I feel like this video is long enough. Um, this entire tier of, uh, of cards, uh, they either just don't have talents or have not, or do have talents and just nobody plays them anyway. Um, I've never seen Demonologist in any deck, um, outside of co-op support. And even in co-op support, I, I would recommend, 
a lot of other things. Um, and then, yeah, like Stasis doesn't have talents. Hex doesn't have talents. Um, I like the Gargoyle change, but I don't think it's that much better. Um, Zealot has talents. Hunter has talents. Uh, Cauldron has talents. But I still don't see any of those decks. Um, I think there's an idea that Cold Mage could be useful um, in the percent deck. Um, there's a deck that uses percentages, uh, including Corsair, um, Corsair Executioner, uh, Minotaur, uh, Cold Mage, and then you're just you're just killing everything with percentage numbers um, or p percentage damage. But I but outside of that one specific niche deck that kind of exists, I I've never seen Cold Mage. Um, I and everything in this extra is basically the Necromancer deck. Um, it's the deck with uh, Necromancer, Frost, Witch, uh, Minotaur. Uh, it's just a combination of these cards, um, and then and then maybe like a shaman or uh, like a shaman or a witch. Most most of the time, it's usually witch. Um, I think the deck is, or most of the time, I think it's shaman, um, but sometimes it's witch as well. Um, I think that witch is 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 cuter in that deck because you can run necromancer you can run weak amio to weakness and then you can run the witch tile and so you're just constantly locking them out of their own board um but i think outside of that deck most of these cards don't do very well um i've seen a minotaur deck uh just a minotaur like dps deck and it doesn't do great i've seen a minute uh, a meteor like dps deck and that also doesn't do as great. I've seen Frost just used as a support card, and that's not that great. Um, but I think all of them together make that deck what it is. And so I don't want to necessarily say any of those cards are bad. Um, but I think that outside of the one specific deck, if you're using them all together, um, if you're not, or I'm, I'm sorry, outside of that deck, if you're not using them all together, I don't think. They're good individually, but I do think that they're very good together. Um, but yeah, uh, that's going to be my tier list. I hope that wasn't too long. I was trying to like speed through all of my thoughts on all of this. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know down in the comments how wrong I am about everything.